Hello everyone, it's Nathan here, and I'm going to be giving a quick overview of the code for the time machine. Now I spent eh, probably about an hour or two this morning uh, working on this code. So, um, here, this is just a Python code, real simple, but this controls the time machine. Um, it doesn't actually control anything, but it, it looks good displaying this on a screen. So, we have a dictionary, and we have a location, time, and status, and then each of those have their own sets of keys. Now, these, um, the location, time, and status actually not used for anything. Um, I just did that so it made it a little easier on myself to make these strings, make it look neat, without it actually doing anything. Um, and this just prints, this little bit of code here, prints 30 lines of random data before the program actually executes, so the screen is filled with something. Now, I'm just going to run this real quick. But I would run it if it would run. Here we go. Um, nope, that's not it. Let's try that once more. Here we go. So I just, we printed out 30 lines of random goofy data. Now, in the movie, this will actually be displaying on a secondary monitor that will be sitting right next to my laptop screen. Um, and so here we read down at the bottom, where would you like to travel? Well, of course, we want to go to Bethlehem. And then it will output some more random data. Now again, this, this actually means nothing, but it looks good on a second screen to have this goofy stuff displaying. Now I actually want to show you the code behind this. So here we see the question where we'd like to travel. And again, my answer doesn't do anything. Uh, we select a random number between 20 and 30. And then we take that number and we just run a loop that many times. And then in that loop, it randomly selects something from one of these three libraries and then from one of those three groups of data in the library. And then it prints that and then it sleeps for a random amount of time, two or two through five seconds in this case. Um, later on in the next group when it does this, it'll be sleeping between three and six seconds each command. Um, and so this will just cycle through until it finishes whatever random number it picked. And then it'll just give me this next question, what time period do you want to warp? And then it'll do the exact same thing using actually the exact same code, except that I changed the 2 and 5 to 3 and 6. And then after it loops through all of that again, we will finally, oh, here it's asking me, what time period do I want to warp to? Well, I actually want to go to 0 ID. Let me just do a capital. Again, this code is not being used at all. Or not the code, but my input's not being used at all. Again, we're seeing some random outputs. Um, for the most part, it's a lot of just junk, uh, but I do have a few real things, attempting to overwrite buffer, repeating last command, minor error in breaking time-space continuum, I thought that was pretty good for an error in a time machine, caching, writing system log, there's actually one string, which I haven't seen here, um, which is something about fatal error, rebooting system now, um, I can actually pull that up right in the actual code here, um, so these are my, the lines of actual real text. Repeating last command, attempting to overwrite buffer, minor error in breaking time space continuum equals mc squared. Here we go. Fatal error, rebooting now. Now I just, to me that was just hilarious because I'm a, I'm a scientist, I'm writing a time machine, and one of the things my time machine is going to tell me is there's a fatal error and needs to reboot. Now I can't imagine that being in the time machine and having the time machine reboot could be remotely safe for me. Okay, here we go. We're going through. This is the last bit of code. Charging the core. It'll cycle through these please waits twice. As you see, it's actually doing the exact same we see in the green here. Here, um, these sleeps of two each. And then anybody who's ever installed something, um, we already missed it, um, knows that that final 1%, the final s section, always takes the longest. So my last please wait, I made it take five seconds before it goes to the next bit of text when everything before that was only two seconds. I thought it was only fitting to do that in a progress chart type sort of scenario. Um, but there you go. That is more or less what you're going to see on my second screen as I am working out on my time machine and trying to figure out how exactly it is that I shall be traveling back in time about 2,000 years to about the other side of the world. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And hopefully we'll be shooting some film real soon. I'm feeling much better than I was over the last weekend. Um, 
So maybe this afternoon yet I'll be shooting some film. I'm not positive. Um, but definitely keep watching our Facebook and our Google Plus pages as that's where we make our updates. And that is the place that you want to be to keep in the know about the Bible Animated. So thanks for watching and I will catch you guys really soon.